Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 7.1 hypothesis testing. 7.1 represents chapter 7, section 1 of the Pearson A level Maths Applied Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Suppose I toss a coin 100 times. The expected number of tails achieved would be 50. This would be true if we assume that the probability of getting a tail P is P equals 0 0.5. Let's take a step back. If we toss a coin 100 times and the probability P of getting a tail is 0 0.5, 100 times 0 0.5 will give us the expected number of tails. So 100 times 0 0.5 is 50 tails. What we assume to be correct is called the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis represents P equals 0 0.5. On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is what we are trying to test. For example, is the coin biased towards landing on a tail? If it is biased towards landing on a tail, hence we would have p is greater than 0.5. So p is greater than 0.5 represents their alternative hypothesis. Now, let's have a look at some important notation. The null hypothesis is denoted by h0. The alternative hypothesis is denoted by h1. The statistic calculated from a sample taken from a population is called the test statistic. Right, types of tests. Here is the first one h0 p equal h1 p is greater than this is a one tail test we are testing for increase in the proportion p second one h0 p is equal h1 p is less than this is a one tail test we are testing for decrease in the proportion p finally we've got h0 p equal h1 p not equal now over here we've got a two tail test we are testing for a change in the proportion p Ladies and gents, these are all the key facts of 7.1 hypothesis testing. I'll be implementing these key facts within examples. Let's have a look at example one. Dimitri wants to see whether a dice is biased towards the value six. He throws the dice 60 times and counts the number of sixes he gets. Parte described the test statistic. Let's have a look at the solution to Parte. I'm going to let capital X be the test statistic. Now x equal, in this scenario, the number of sixes achieved from a sample of 60 throws of the dice. That is the test statistic. Let's have a look at part b of the example. Write down a suitable null hypothesis to test this dice. Now the null hypothesis is denoted by H0. So we've got H0 colon. The null hypothesis is what we assume to be correct. So the probability of getting a six will be one out of six. So H0 represents P equal one out of six. Let's have a look at part C of the example. Write down a suitable alternative hypothesis to test the dice. Right, the alternative hypothesis is denoted by H1. So we've got H1 colon. We are testing if the dice is biased towards the value six. In other words, biased towards landing on a six. So H1 would represent P is greater than one over six. The probability of getting a six is greater than one over six. That there completes example one. Moving on to example two. In a manufacturing process, the proportion P of faulty articles has been found from long experience to be 0.1. A sample of 100 articles from a new manufacturing process is tested and 8 are found to be faulty. The manufacturer wishes to test at the 5% level of significance whether or not there has been a reduction in the proportion of faulty articles. Part A suggests a suitable test statistic. Let's have a look at the solution to Part A. So let capital X be the test statistic. So X is equal to, in this scenario, the number of faulty articles from a sample of 100 articles. That there is the test statistic. Moving on to part B. Write down two suitable hypotheses. So we've got the null hypotheses and the alternative hypotheses. So H0 P equal. 
So in a manufacturing process, the proportion P of faulty articles has been found from long experience to be 0.1. So we are assuming that P is equal to 0.1. That there, ladies and gents, is the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, H1, will be P. Let's have a look. The manufacturer wishes to test at the 5% level of significance whether or not there has been a reduction in the proportion of faulty articles. So we are testing for reduction, so testing for decrease in the proportion P. So for H1, we would have P is less than 0.1. So that there, ladies and gents, completes part B of example 2. And this teaching video 7.1 hypothesis testing. If you found the teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.